especially proud to host Fox 2's annual Tribute to Our Troops special, which uh, paid very special tribute one year to, our, to the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial. Every year it's a fabulous pull at the heartstrings special, and it's coming up again in November, right? Right at Veterans Day. Veterans Day. Makes kind of sense, doesn't it? But I believe Sherry's most important accomplishment uh, is she's the one responsible actually for getting me hired on the Dick Burton Show. She will deny it because she knew one day my career would end, and it did. She's still employed, I'm not. But uh, you can ask me about that later. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, an honor, a real honor and privilege, my dear friend, and we're so thrilled to have her, to bring her here on the stage for the Victory Gala, my dear friend from Fox 2, Sherry Margolis. Let's hear it for Sherry. Good evening. Thank you, Alan, and yes, I deny everything. He claims that I got him his job in broadcasting, but actually I did, and I'm so proud of it and so happy to this day. Absolutely. So I'm putting on my glasses because I am of an age, you know, and I can't see, yeah, right, thank you. Can't see the words without the glasses. Oh, and now you're all fuzzy, so it's a very interesting phenomenon that we experience. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for being here, and thank you for inviting me, and thank you for coming to the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial Second Annual Victory Gala. Wow, I am looking around the room, and it is amazing. It is amazing. I love the costumes, I love the music, the ambiance. We have stepped back in time tonight to another era, and it is really, really beautiful, and it's so great to be here. So we want to thank everybody on the board of the uh, Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial and the committee for the Victory Gala doing such an amazing job and also for giving me the privilege of taking part in tonight's festivities. This is really a great honor for me. As Alan mentioned, um, my late father, George Margulis, who died a couple of years ago, and my father-in-law, Harry Zaslow, who also died a a couple of years ago. We're both Army veterans, and we are very proud as a family of their service to our country. As a matter of fact, my father-in-law actually wrote a book about his experiences. He was a liberator at Dachau, uh, and the book is called A Teenager's Journey in War and Peace. It was an amazing experience. While he was in the war abroad he, for four years, he wrote letters home to his mother, and he didn't know, but she saved them in a box. And when she died, he found that box of letters, 400 of them, and turned them into a book. And it's an amazing book. And it's really a legacy for our family that we cherish. So to my amazement, I have come to learn that Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Jefferson, who is here tonight and was one of your Victory Award recipients last year, was also a liberator at Dachau. Uh, so I want to give shout out to him this evening. Standing up. Thank you for your service. Thank you for being here tonight. I can't wait to give you a hug. He was also uh, featured on uh, the special that we do at Fox 2 each year, Tribute to Our Troops. And it was our honor and priv privilege to feature him in that program, which will be on again this year on uh, Veterans Day, as it always is. We feature stories about Michigan servicemen and women and their families, and we profile them and the amazing commitment um, that they have made to our country. So look for that on Fox 2 on uh, Veterans Day this year again. So it is really an honor to be with all of you at this beautiful gala to honor all of your efforts to build the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial. Now this isn't the start of our former formal program, but I do have some quick comments as you all settle in, enjoy the food. I wanna make sure that you take a close look at the brick paver forms that are on your tables. Take a quick look at those. You can honor someone with the purchase of a brick. I think that's such a beautiful idea. And tonight, those bricks are specially priced for the Victory Gala, they're 25% off. Such a deal. It's a beautiful way to honor a loved one. 
the BRICS will create the memorial's very special walk of honor. And finally, if you prefer, you can donate by way of the pledge card, which is also on your table. Whoa. Thank you very much. <laughs> so please be very generous with your pledges because our greatest generation deserves nothing less. I think you'll agree with that. The great World War II era musical favorites that you're hearing tonight and that you will hear throughout the evening come courtesy of Ron Kischuk and the Masters of Music Quintet, and they sound amazing. Let's give them a big applause as well. Love that music. Also, remember to eat to your heart's content tonight. Our strolling dinner is provided by some of Metro Detroit's finest restaurants and bakeries, beautiful, wonderful places, and delicious food. So eat up and enjoy. Finally, I'd like to remind you that you have until 8.15, please remember that, you have until 8.15 to bid on the silent auction items. So I hope you'll go out and shop till you drop so many amazing items that you can, that you can bid on. And while you're bidding, remember you are supporting a really great cause, the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial. So be generous, bid often. So thank you so much, everyone. I'm going to be back shortly to continue with our gala program. In the meantime, eat, drink, and bid. Okay, enjoy. Cherie Margolis. Oh, Alan. We have real celebrities here tonight, and I took a picture of them because, oh my goodness, I'm so excited to be here with them. I am very proud to be joined on stage right now by the board president of the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial, Debbie Hollis, who in just, yes, absolutely, she deserves it. And in just a moment, Debbie is going to share some words with you about this year's recipients who are amazing. Also on stage with me is our distinguished Victory Award winners from last year's gala, Fireman First Class Art Fishman, and Tuskegee Airman Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Jefferson. It's such an honor to be here on the stage with them. Uh, in just a few moments, Art and Alex will hand this year's honorees, this year's honorees, their victory awards. So they're going to have to hand over their awards from last year. Handing the tiara over. <laughs> now they get to keep them. Anyway, Debbie, would you please do the honors for us? Hi, everyone. Can you all hear me? Yeah. All right. So thanks for coming tonight. This is a really special night for all of us, and we're really thrilled to have all of you here. I'm so happy to be back on this stage to give the Victory Awards tonight. This is really what this evening and our whole memorial is all about. So being able to honor two of our very special veterans tonight is for me the best part of tonight. And as Sherry said, we are really blessed to have Art Fishman and Alexander Jefferson back with us. And uh, they will do the handoff in a few moments. So this year, we are awarding two veterans who have been involved in our program since the very beginning of our Honor Flight Michigan days, way back in 2007. In fact, they actually met before their Honor Flight trip. Bill Rosniai was a navigator on a B-17 bomber with the 8th Air Force in the Euro European Theater of Operation. Upon discharge, he was a second lieutenant in the Air Corps. He flew 35 combat missions and was part of the bombing of Dresden. Bill is sitting right over there. I encourage all of you to say hi to him later. <laughs> Mar 
Murray Cotter was a bombardier on a B-24 bomber with the 13th Air Force, serving in the Pacific Theater of Operations. Upon discharge, he was a first lieutenant in the Air Corps, and he flew 13 combat missions. Murray is also right over there. So way back in 2005, Bill Rosnii was giving a presentation on his World War II service at the Baldwin Library in Birmingham. Murray Cotter happened to be in the audience that day. After the presentation was over, Murray and his friend Bert Miner decided to reach out to Bill and have lunch with him. That day, a beautiful friendship was born between Bill and Murray. It wasn't long after that that they formed a group they called the Flyboys. Their founding members, Bill and Murray, Bert Miner, and Bob Stauffer, decided that they would have lunch on a regular basis to swap war stories and get to know each other better. Over time, the group has grown to involve World War II veterans from all branches of the service and even a gentleman from the French Resistance. Not long after this, in 2006, our magazine did a story on the Flyboys and photographed them at Yankee Air Museum when they had an amazing opportunity. They were able to take a flight in a B-17 bomber. None of them had been in a World War II airplane since the war. They were given an incredible experience a rare chance to revisit history without the war. A short time later, on June 2nd, 2007, Bill and Murray became part of our family when they went on our third Honor Flight Michigan trip. It was a memorable, memorable day for them and for the rest of our team who had the very sincere pleasure of meeting them. Not only had they become fast friends, they soon became incredible ambassadors of the Honor Flight Michigan program. They initiated a fundraiser even by selling tickets for another B-17 bomber flight at the Yankee Air Museum, raising thousands of dollars for us. When our mission changed from the honor flight trips to the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial, they were right there by our side. They've been with us on so many of our events and fundraisers that we really need to outfit them with GPS trackers so we know where they are and what they're doing for us. They've been to pancake breakfasts, movie premieres, VE Day and VJ Day events, book release parties, our memorial site dedication ceremony, brick paver preview parties, D-Day movie nights, various fundraisers, and more. They even continue to attend the Flyboy lunches all these years later, twice a month. If any of you ever want to meet a group of World War II veterans and hear their stories, they meet at Little Daddy's at 18 and Woodward on the second and fourth Thursdays of the month. I encourage you to go and hear their stories. I remember once, Bill, you christened me with the nickname Sparky, short for spark plug, because you thought I was so energetic. I have to say, both you and Murray, with everything you do for us, you are the two that deserve the name Sparky. So while we would like to honor each of these men individually, we simply have to honor them together tonight. That's always how they've been known to us, Bill and Murray. Everybody always asks, how is Bill and Murray? So I wanted to do this speech for the both of them. I've gone to lunch with them on numerous occasions. One time in particular stands out in my mind. I'll never forget Murray wanted to take me out for a Guinness beer. And I told him I didn't like Guinness beer. And he would have none of that. He said, you're going to come to lunch, and you're going to learn to like Guinness. And I said, well, you know what? I'm happy to go to lunch, but I don't think I'm going to like Guinness. But I'll go to lunch with you and Bill, of course. So we get to the Red Coat Tavern is where we went that day. And the waiter came, and Murray and Bill ordered their beer. And they tried to order a Guinness for me. And I looked at the waiter, and I said, I don't really like Guinness. Can you just give me a small little taste? And the waiter and Murray, I'm convinced, were in cahoots. Because the waiter looked at Murray and winked and looked back at me and said, oh no, the bartender will have nothing like to do with that. He brings me a full 16 ounce pour of Guinness beer. Remember the beer that I don't like. So trying to be kind to Murray, I tasted it. And you know what? I didn't like it. <laughs> Murray said, keep drinking. You'll like it by the time you get to the bottom of the, the glass. And Bill and Murray just laughed and laughed as they watched me struggle through that beer. And I thought, my God, I'm being peer pressured. 
or should I say beer pressured, by two 90-year-olds. But I have to say, by the time I got to the bottom of the glass, Murray, it was pretty darn good. So Bill and Murray have taught me that it's never too late in life to get involved. It's never too late to make new friends and to fill your world with more people to love and who will love you back. It's never too late to find a whole new group of people that you can admire and respect. It's never too late to take a younger woman out for a Guinness and to teach a young dog new tricks. And it's certainly never too late to tell your story to those who want to honor you and give you back in small measure for everything you have done for us. Bill and Murray are now 93 and 95 years old. They've been tireless supporters of our cause and it is them that we honor tonight with the Victory Award. Their World War II service, their kindness, their spirit, and their smiles bring us joy every day. I suggest each of you take the opportunity to talk to them tonight. They are truly remarkable men that I and the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial are truly privileged to call our friends. I'd like to bring them to the stage now. Okay, wait a minute. I made a mistake. We're going to show a video first. Sorry. <laughs> we have a short video honoring Bill and Murray and everything you just heard me talk about. And then you can stand up again. Then we'll bring him up.
oh my goodness, just a small, small taste of the amazing people that we are honoring tonight. It is very moving for me and very a real privilege and honor. So ladies and gentlemen, please give another huge round of applause for Bill Rosnii and Murray Cotter, our 2017 Victory Award honorees. by a very special guest tonight. We're so happy that he is here. Brigadier General Pablo Estrada, Commander, Land Component Command, Michigan National Guard, representing Governor Snyder's office. Thank you. It's a fantastic honor. I'm Alexander Jefferson. It's a fantastic honor to award Bill Rosier the 2017 Victory Award from the WW2 Legacy. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. I'm honored to receive this award because I know there's a lot of other veterans out here that did just as much as me or probably more. And I, and I, I can't get over how eloquent Debbie was with her, talk, with her speech for us. And I also want to thank her and her crew for the fantastic and enormous job they've taken on to, to do this memorial for us. I know it's just heartbreaking, frustrating, but they're plugging along. I really appreciate it. When I think back in 1941, I was just a carefree 17-year-old junior in high school until Pearl Harbor. And then my life changed. All my dreams, aspirations, plans were either eliminated or just shelved. I only had two concerns. When am I going to the service and what branch? Eventually, I applied to the Army Air Corps. I was accepted as an aviation cadet. But I went through a lot of emotions when I was in the service. I was airsick, seasick, homesick, happy, bored, worried, scared, and terrified. But I was glad to do my part in winning the war. 
because it was a bad war, a very costly war. 403,000 were, were lost, and many thousand more were wounded in mind and body. But we maintained our, our freedoms and, and our rights, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom to assemble, the right for a fair, a, a fair trial, and the right to protest. And if you didn't like an elected official, you could get rid of them by voting. So I want to say thanks to all the veterans whose lives, ladies, men and ladies, men and women, whose lives were interrupted so they could serve their country to defeat the enemy. In, in 2007, I went on the honor flight that Debbie mentioned, and as I was getting on the bus, to go to the airport, they gave me a bag. It had a candy, gum, and a camera, and a t-shirt. And on the t-shirt, it said on the front, Hunter Flight, Michigan. But on the back, it had these words. If you could read this, thank a teacher. If it's in English, Thanks a veteran. No better words spoken. Thank you. to make this award to you for a very special reason. You and I were both in the Pacific at the same time, whether you realize it or not. You were flying over it. You saw what went on. I was aboard ship below deck. The <laughs> next day they told me where I'd been. So it's with honor that I handle this award tonight. Oh. I wish you well. I wish you long life and all I can. Yeah. Thank you. Don't go too. He didn't get injured during the war. We don't want him falling off the stage. These guys are fakers. <laughs> yes, I was in the war. There are a lot more of them that are in the war than, than I. But, uh, oh, I'm talking like this. Can you hear me better this way? <laughs> but, um, uh, 20th Air Force is where I was in the Pacific and uh, um, we had we had a marvelous time. Do anybody I use the word crap you about what you uh, did or didn't do uh, during the war. Uh, I've got a few things to, to show you that would prove it. We've got such a nice crowd here tonight. Good Lord, look at them. Thank <laughs> God. Uh, I'm... All right. You good? Set. You want to say more? Do you want me to quit? No. <laughs> I want you to hold the mic so they can hear you. Oh, is that what it is? Oh, yeah. Hold the mic so they can hear you. Hey. You give me a microphone and look out, kids. I might be here the rest of the evening. I'm kidding, of course. That's it. That's something that so many of the men that come up for a meeting such as we have here tonight and for a 
spoon and whatever we had for the rest of it. But uh, uh, I came home whole. I went in a hole and came out whole. More Thai is a little island down the South Pacific. And, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and B-24, B-24 was our plane. And uh, we had some bad things that happened. Is any one of you that was in a plane during the war? Uh, but we're here to talk about it. And I'm not a hunter yet. I'm getting close. <laughs> But anyway, it's so nice to see all of you here. I didn't realize they were going to be here like this. So thanks. I love you. Wow. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to talk right now. <laughs> Hang on. Well, that was very special. I think we can all agree on that. That was amazing to see these two American heroes being honored in this way. We are so privileged to be able to give, this, give them this honor after what they've done for us. So, you know where I'm going with this. How can you not be moved by this video that we've seen and seeing these amazing men being honored tonight um, without taking out your wallet? <laughs> because we want to make this very special monument. We want to make this award, a permanent award, a, a honor to honor all of the men and women who sacrificed so much for us and for our country. So I'm going to ask you, okay? I really want you to take out your wallets. I'm uncomfortable doing that in most circumstances, but I'm not at all uncomfortable doing it tonight. I'm not quite sure why. But um, Bill and Murray are two of the 600,000 Michigan men and women that the memorial will pay tribute to. So please, I'm asking you to please honor them tonight with a donation. Fill out the pledge cards on your table and be generous. Dig deep, help us ensure that this very deserving memorial for these very, very deserving men and women does indeed get built. We really want to see it become a reality. So I'm going to give you some time. And I'm watching. I'm going to take out my phone and I'm going to take some pictures. <laughs> so please start donating. Because that's why we're all here tonight. We are here for this memorial. We really want, it seems, how many years has it been now? Since the fundraising started for the memorial. It's been about four years, okay? I want to do the story. I want to do the story and I want to feature it on our special that we do each year, tribute to our troops. I want to do a story on this real tribute, this very, very important tribute. You know, there are people who deny that World War II ever happened, who deny that the Holocaust ever happened, 
who deny this amazing, horrible time in our history. As shocking as it is, people deny that it happened. I was just talking to our wonderful honorees tonight and from last year, and they said there are people who, dis who dispute their story of what happened, even though they were there. So we really want this memorial. We want it to stand. We want it to stand proudly. We want to see it happen. So please be a part of that. How proud will you be? How proud you'll feel when you finally see this memorial, this very important memorial, and know that you helped to get it built. We're going to talk about the pavers as well. What an amazing honor to be able to honor somebody in your life with a real piece of this. But how incredible to look at it once it's built and know that you helped get it built, that you were a part of it. Okay. Lecture's over. By the way, when you have completed your pledge cards, please raise your hand and our volunteers will come around and collect them, okay? For your convenience, you can make your payment at the checkout table before you leave this evening. And I thank you very much from the bottom of my heart, the whole committee does, for your generosity. We appreciate it. So you have until 8.15 Okay, you have about 15, 20 minutes to shop till your heart's content at our silent auction tables. We want to raise money that way too. So we'd love to see you do some great bidding. So go on out there and enjoy. And we hope you're enjoying this great variety provided by our incredible strolling dinner and all the desserts and everything. So thank you so much. Oh, I want to mention, I think I'm supposed to mention this now as, as, as well. When you have a moment, we invite you to stop by our special display in the back uh, to learn more about why you are here tonight, to raise awareness and funds for the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial. So you can see more about it in the back of the room. It's a great opportunity to buy a tribute brick that I mentioned before that will actually be placed at the Memorial Walk of Honor. And remember, tonight they're 25% off, so it's a good time to buy and to honor someone special. Okay, we're going to take a break now, so go bid. presentation from a great group of young men and women. We ask that you stand if you are able and turn your attention to the Cast Tech High School Junior ROTC Color Guard and also please remain standing immediately following the presenting of the colors as Christiana Marks and Jakira McCarty from the ROTC, I think I said that wrong, I think it's Jakira, from the ROTC will sing our national anthem.
goodness, that was beautiful. Thank you so much. At this time, I'd like to ask all of our veterans in the audience to please remain standing if you're able. The rest of you may be seated. Thank you so much for your service. Let's show our appreciation and love for these great Americans. Thank you so much. And we are not quite through yet. Finally, would all of our World War II veterans and original Rosie the Riveters and Homefront workers remain standing, please. And ladies and gentlemen, let's give one more round of applause for the heroes of our greatest generation. We can't thank you enough for your courage and your sacrifice. You are the reason that we are building the Michigan World War II Legacy Memorial. Thank you so much. So now I'd like to take a moment to read to you a very touching story, the story called The Fallen Soldier. Most of you may have seen by now the empty table up here, uh, right here by the stage. While we are blessed to have some of our World War II veterans with us tonight, the sad fact is that they did not all come home. So here is the story and the symbolism about this lone table. The table before you is set for one to symbolize the frailty of one soldier alone against their enemies. The tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their intentions to respond to their country's call to arms. The single yellow rose, symbolizing remembrance, displayed in a vase, reminds us of the families and loved ones of our comrades in arms who keep their memories alive, lest we forget. The red ribbon tied so prominently on the vase is a reminder of the bloodshed to protect the liberty so loved by our country. A slice of lemon is on the bread plate to remind us of their bitter fate. There is salt upon the bread plate, symbolic of the family's tears. The glass inverted because we cannot toast, they cannot toast with us this night. The chair, the chair is empty. They are not here. Remember all of you who served with them and called them comrades, who depended upon their might and relied upon them to keep you safe, for surely they have not forsaken you. That's a really big one. I'm glad I got through that. <laughs> and now, all right, so now, Excited to start the USA, USO portion of the evening. We, we, we're going to have Ron Kistrick and the Masters of Big Band playing our big band favorites, accompanied by Paul King on vocals. We also have a very special treat tonight, Harold Lanning, World War II veteran who was in the Special Services Entertainment Unit during the war and performed in USO shows, is going to take the stage one more time to sing a couple of his favorite songs that he performed 72 years ago. Amazing. We're going to far across the sea. Let us swear allegiance to a land that's free. Let us all be grateful.
over the years. And it was, the words were written by Rudyard Kipling. And uh, Ole Speaks put the music to it. And it's called On the Road to Mandalay. Oh, my, Yanina, oh, my, Yanina, my wild red rose with poppies in her hair. 